greetings, humans. So I was sitting here munching on some Smarties. Y'all want one? Um, munching on some Smarties, and I realized I didn't make a video today. I took notes to make a video today, but I didn't make a video. And your girl will not be looked over, okay? So I'm going to finish these Smarties, and we're going to get right down to it. Welcome, humans, to episode four of Black History Highlights. I am your host, <laughs> Tamara, like this is a show or something, but I suppose if it has episodes, it can be considered a show. Fluffy. But, all that aside, today we are talking about Dr. Marie Maynard Dowling. Okay? We're talking about chemistry today. So she was born to Ivan and Helen Daly on April 16, 1921. Her mother was a homemaker and avid reader, coming from a family of avid readers, uh, and her father was a postal clerk but had moved from the West Indies to um, the States to go to Cornell to study chemistry. Sadly, he ran out of money and so went to postal work, okay? Um, she graduated from Hunter College High School, which is an all-girls school in New York, <clears throat> and in 1942, she graduated from Queens College with honors and a degree in chemistry. Uh, she decided to stay close to home, to stay at home, so that she could save money, okay? Uh, she worked as a lab assistant at Queens College and won a hard fought for fellowship to cover her master's degrees and to cover her master's degree fees at NYU. So in 1943 she completed her master's in again in chemistry and in 1944 she enrolled at Columbia for a doctoral program. So in 1944 it was her ambition, her intelligence that really got her into school, but also one of those small things in history is it's World War II, okay? It's the peak of World War II. So there were a lot of, basically a whole generation of young men were out fighting a war, and so there were a lot of more, a lot more available spots for women. And also, the chemistry program was being run by a Dr. Mary Caldwell. She was really a trailblazer for women in chemistry and should probably get her own episode. Okay? But in 1947, mind you, three years, okay, she completed her PhD in chemistry. Again, she became the first African American woman to have a PhD in chemistry. So congratulations. Okay. Um, she worked as, after graduating, she worked as a physical science instructor at Howard from 1947 to 1948. But she also, um, during that time, she received a grant from the American Cancer Association to study complicated to study the complicated inner workings of the human body and that grant was the beginning of seven years at the Rockefeller Institute of Medicine. Uh, she really focused on in her research how proteins were constructed, some stuff on uh, cell nucleus, the role of cytoplasmic ribonucleo ribonucleoproteins in protein synthesis and probably the best known ribonucleoprotein are biologists in the back? Ribosomes, okay? So she really studied that a lot. And, 
And in 1953, when Watson and Crick published uh, The Structure of DNA, that had a huge impact. This was like a wave. This started a cascade of funding into her area of research. So the availability of funding, for anybody who in research knows, is everything. So the availability of funding really helped her to thrive and do the research that she wanted to do and excel in it because she had the money to do so. Okay, so in 1955, she moved back, uh, she went back to Columbia University to collaborate with Dr. Quentin Deming um, and looked at the cause of heart attacks. And it is thanks to their research and their collaboration that they showed a relationship between high cholesterol and clogged arteries. So, our hearts thank you. They also, this understanding of high cholesterol and clogged arteries led to a new understanding of how food and diet can affect your health, your heart, and your circulatory system. And also at, Colum at Columbia, she taught biochemistry. Uh, it seems a very appropriate field for her. Okay, seeing, upon seeing her, realizing, I guess, her importance in history as the first black African-American woman to have a PhD in chemistry, she really began to champion the effort to get minorities and people of color into medical and science graduate programs. So for that, I thank you. In 1988, she started a scholarship in honor of her father for minority students at Queens College. In 1986, she retired from the Albert Einstein College at Columbia with many honors, including um, Phi Beta Kappa and being, I mean, sorry, being elected to Phi Beta Kappa and being a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. In 19, oh gracious, rather, rather recently, um, October 28, 2003, Dr. Marie Maynard Daly died in New York City because of because of you, Dr. Daly, Daly Daly, because of you, Dr. Daly, we can. Okay, because of you and people like you, who are, who have been, currently are, and will work in the fields of medicine and science, technology, engineering, and math. As a woman, as a person of color, as a minority in many respects, I thank you. And I thank all of the people who are doing work similar to this. You know, getting to a good place and then remembering where you came from and pulling people up. That is what being a human is about. So thank you for watching. If you have any suggestions for folks you want to hear about uh, later in the month, please leave me a comment below. Uh, this week, scientists and inventors. Next week, revolutionaries and social activists. The following week, artists and entertainers. Fourth week, educators, politicians, and world changers. And the 29th is a miscellaneous day where I share all of the people that I may not have had time to. Um, to share with you in a longer video. So keep watching and I'll see you next time. Toodles!